Yeah. Um, no, I mean, if, frankly, the risk of something bad happening to me of even literally being shot is quite uh, significant. I'm definitely not going to be, you know, doing any open air car parades. Uh, let me put it that way. <laughs> um, but it's also not, <laughs> it's not that hard to kill me if somebody wanted to. So hopefully they don't. And uh, if fate smiles upon the situation with me and does not, uh, security. that does not happen. Um, I mean, I'm taking yeah. reasonable proportions, I guess, but but uh, it, there's definitely some some risk here. But wow, yep, that right there is one of the world's richest people who is now pissing off a lot of other very rich people, telling everyone that uh, his security is at risk here, which it is. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. My name is Zukardowski here of WeAreChange.org, and we have an absolute plethora of incredibly crazy news coming in from all over the world. But specifically in this video, we want to focus and highlight on the major revelations coming from Elon Musk and Twitter that has stunned the world, showed the receipts, and now has provided us some unbelievable proof of some very bad actions by some very powerful people, which Elon thinks are at risk for his safety. Yes, we're going to be talking about that, plus a lot more. If you like the shirt that I'm wearing, you can get it on thebestpoliticalshirts.com. And the clip that we played in the beginning of this broadcast was from a shared Twitter space that just happened last night with Elon Musk taking hours out of his day and answering questions from what is predominantly a lot of independent journalists that were asking some really interesting questions for a very eye-opening conversation surrounding, of course, the release of the Twitter files and more files to come. As, of course, Matt Taibbi just released the first set of eye-opening information, we're now finding out that Barry Weiss has the second data package that she is most likely going to be releasing Monday. As we have to admit here, the major bombshells released by Matt Taibbi are huge and have a lot of grave implications for a lot of people that abuse their positions of power for their own personal benefit. Now, the media coverage of this has been very interesting, as of course Fox News has been covering this very extensively, and some other media organizations haven't. That's mainly because a lot of media organizations are complicit when it comes to the larger cover up and what many people are saying is clear election interference. Fox News had a very interesting headline that read, Media as Hunter Biden collusion, Twitter files dump has them on defense attacking the messenger in a byline in their opinion piece saying that the media is too invested in the suppression of the story to acknowledge the extent of the scandal. And it is a major scandal, which the New York Times is ignoring. It looks like the Washington Post, CBS News, and ABC News are all also avoiding this major bombshell story that everyone is talking about. And if we remember, large swaps of the corporate mainstream media didn't just ignore this original story, didn't just not report on it, but actively participated in what we now know is a cover up with Rolling Stone in 2020, right before the last presidential election came out and called this story that we knew. Many people at the FBI, at Twitter, and at other big tech social media companies knew was true, but were knowingly lying to everyone about it. Rolling Stone was going along with the lie and pushing this larger gaslighting effort. Now, what kind of reporting did we see from all of this? Well, also a lot of criticism of Matt Taibbi for releasing the documents for some reason. MSNBC was trashing his, quote, ethics and standards, which I don't think they even understand what it is, especially with their failed disastrous partisan news that, if you could even call it that, that they dribble out of their mouth holes repeatedly. And if it wasn't clear enough already, I think it's becoming more clearer by the day that the corporate media is just acting on the behest of government and essentially doing PR for them and other very rich, connected individuals. As, of course, we have to remember here, it wasn't just the corporate media that was lying here. It was also many government officials, allegedly in the intelligence community, that were discrediting this story, which we're now finding out they absolutely knew was true. Now, what's really interesting here is the involvement of the Donald Trump administration that looks like it played a very key role 
in their own demise when it comes to this entire saga, as of course it was the Donald Trump administration that passed a law that allowed the Department of Homeland Security to go to big tech social media companies and to ban accounts. We're also finding out from this leak by Elon Musk that both parties had the tools to ban individuals in 2020 and that there were requests from the Trump White House that were met, received, and honored. But as Matt Taibbi points out, a lot of the bannings, a lot of the discrimination when it came to political speech that happened on Twitter largely happened because of the connections that people within the government had to Twitter. And obviously, many people at Twitter were more favorable towards the Democrats. And overwhelmingly, the Democrats were using these tools, these back doors in order to communicate and to ban legal speech on their platform because they just didn't agree with it. Another interesting thing that we found out from these leaks is who was directly responsible for a lot of these calls, a lot of these decisions, and of course it was Vijaya Gadi, an individual formerly Twitter's policy head who was seen crying after Elon Musk was announced to be taking over the company. Why was she crying? Well, that's because she had her hand in the cookie jar. She was the one implicated. She was the one making the calls. As the revelations from Matt Taibbi show that even Jack Dorsey, the CEO, wasn't aware of many of these decisions and had a hard time of even trying to clear them up. As mainly Vinjaya was calling all the shots here, making all the decisions, with obviously a very clear bias. As she was the main person person deciding that stories that she knew and the Federal Bureau of Investigations knew were true would be censored because it made the administration that she was connected to look bad right before a major election. Now, does all the blame go on Vinjaya? No, there's probably also backdoor communications that we are still not aware of that happened between her and the Department of Homeland Security and probably the Federal Bureau of Investigations, as we're also finding out the involvement of James Baker at the Federal Bureau of Investigations that was also at the head of many of these important decisions, as of course, the FBI had the Hunter Biden laptop. They had Tony Bobolinsky coming to them, confirming a lot of these stories to be true. And then the FBI went around telling big tech social media that it wasn't true and that they needed to censor the story from the American public right before the election. As major polls show that if the American public was aware of this story, that they would have voted differently, essentially changing the outcome of the last presidential election, or as some people would say, fortifying it for their own political cause. We're also finding out that FBI agents met weekly with social media tech companies right before the 2020 election. And if you detail the activities of the FBI during that election cycle, there are a lot of very serious questions that should be brought up since, of course, people are accusing them of acting like the Stasi for one political party while punishing the other one. The other one, of course, being the Republican Party, as it looks like they are predominantly loyal servants of the Democrats. Through the disclosures, we also found out how the government went after people like James Woods, an actor who they didn't like what kind of political expression he had, so therefore he had to be gone, according to the Federal Bureau of Investigations. This as top Republicans are coming out today and saying that there's a much larger story behind everything that was just released to the general public as U.S. Senator Ron Johnson is teasing a possible investigation and report into all of this and, uh, it shouldn't be be teased. It should be initiated automatically. We have agents at the federal government knowing a story is true, lying that it wasn't, and then going to people telling them to not report on it, stifling journalism, stifling any kind of honest and real reporting right before an election, which of course swayed it towards their own personal benefit. If the Republicans ever want to win an election ever again, they must do something about this as, of course, we know that Twitter is just one company. As, of course, there are many other companies out there that have a lot more influence than they do when it comes to online discourse. What's the involvement of the FBI there? Well, until there's an investigation, we will not know at all. And until then, they will continue 
to manipulate information, censor accounts that directly benefit them when it comes to online discourse which dictates and decides American politics. Now Elon Musk is revealing all of this and when it comes to shifting the balance and making it fair and making it more accountable, there of course is going to be a lot of pushback, a lot of blowback against him and the federal agencies that he is putting in check. As of course Elon Musk is also promising more smoking gun documents and information to be revealed to the general public and most of what he originally released was already known but at least now we know the details of it we have the receipts of it we have the undeniable accounts and documents of it that cannot be denied that in a court of law that in some kind of investigation there might be some actual changes to that and because of that because a major political party might lose their fortification of their political future there should be of course some retribution which from earlier on in the video elon musk was talking talking about later on in this phone call in this Twitter space that he had with many independent journalists he reiterated the point once again saying this <laughs> I do not have any suicidal thoughts I uh, I, I if I committed suicide it's not real <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, when one of the most powerful people in the world starts to say things like that, I think we should be starting to pay attention as, of course, Epstein was also trending during Friday night's delayed release of the original Twitter files by Matt Taibbi with many people, of course, speculating that something could have happened to Elon when it came to releasing the documents originally and with how corrupted, how disgusting the national security state is, especially with the larger intelligence agencies that worked with, cooperated, and financed a larger international trafficking and extortion operation that hurt children in unspeakable ways. This is what the intelligence agencies are capable of. And when it comes to exposing them and putting them in check, it's important to know that people who do so become a risk of those same kind of nefarious behaviors that they were previously responsible for. Now, what's going to be in this next upcoming file release from Twitter? Well, a lot of people are speculating that there might be some information specifically about Brazil's election and a lot of other nefarious behavior by very powerful people that used their platform, not as a social media platform, but as a platform to propagate their ideas and to destroy other ones that held them accountable. Now that Twitter is under the control of Elon Musk, do we have the possibility, do we have the ability to counter a lot of this very nefarious activities. Will something happen to Elon Musk? Will the voices of the people finally remain free, uninhibited, uncensored by the federal government? Well, time will only tell. But uh, it, it's it's even crazy for, for me to say this, but uh, I'm personally rooting for the guy that's going to be putting microchips in people's heads soon. So yeah, that's my particular take on this very specific issue. There's still also a lot of important updates when it comes to Mr. Epstein that we're going to be getting into in future videos on this platform. Make sure you subscribe and click the notification button as we're going to be talking about some bigger details in future broadcasts. And we also just released another t-shirt today when it comes to, of course, making fun of the psyops and mind control all around us that of course have a very negative effect on us by the way in the making of this video i just thought of a new sh shirt that's related to epstein and elon we're going to be releasing that later on today as well so check out the best political shirts.com our website where we're going to have some really amazing incredible designs graphics and thought-provoking conversations that you could have just by simply buying a t-shirt. Buying a t-shirt doesn't just help grow this independent media organization. We started this company, by the way, because YouTube censored us, because YouTube demonetized us, so we needed another way to make money. We started the t-shirt company, and this is one of our main ways that we get financed, but also more importantly, this is one of the main ways that we help do activism. This is the best way to do lazy protesting by expressing a political message that cannot be censored no matter where you are. And whether it's the bank, whether it's the grocery store, whether it's walking around in the park, people reading your t-shirts will be affected by 
by them and it will make them think about crucial ideas that sadly are being censored from our larger lexicon, from our larger online discourse. Again, the best political shirts.com. There couldn't be a better way to get involved and uh, not really have to do much. They also make great Christmas gifts. The shirt I'm wearing is also available on thebestpoliticalshirts.com. And because you guys buy t-shirts, this is why I'm here. This is why I love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org.